okay uh, so welcome uh, to the second week of this course on combinatorics and uh, previous week look, we looked at uh, the uh, pgn hole principle and some related uh, questions this week uh, we are going to look at uh, some basic counting techniques which will be useful for uh, uh, you know developing new techniques as well as uh, you know for any question that uh, you might look at combinatorics. Uh, uh, any of these uh, uh, questions will most of the time need some of these basic techniques and their uh, understanding. So uh, we are going to uh, start with a, a simple uh, question and then we try to see how to develop this uh, into a technique and then uh, uh, and that is the idea okay so <clears throat> here is the question that a number of monkeys uh, jumped across a small river from tree a to tree b okay so we have uh, uh, these two trees let us say a and b and then uh, uh, the monkeys jumped from one uh, tree to the other now uh, when they were jumping uh, 10 of the monkeys uh, fell down to the river and then they got wet and then they swam across. What we know further is that the remaining 15 monkeys uh, did not get wet. Now the question asks us to find what is the total number of monkeys uh, that jumped. Okay. Now this is a very e easy question. Right? Any, any student of mathematics should immediately be able to tell that uh, since we have uh, 10 monkeys who fell to the river and 15 who did not we have 10 plus 15 right which is equal to 25 right so 25 monkeys uh, basically uh, jumped from river uh, uh, you know one, one, one of the tree to the other on the river side right? that is the uh, answer that uh, we all know okay. now <clears throat> let us look at a slightly different question a number of uh, uh, friends went for uh, a trip somewhere okay now uh, when they came back eight of them wore uh, blue t-shirts and 11 of them wore uh, red t-shirts now the question is that how many went for that trip now is it possible uh, to answer that uh, this is uh, 11 plus 8 is equal to 19. Well, in fact, no, right? Because, uh, you know, what we know is that uh, there were 8 people wearing blue t-shirts and 11 wearing red t-shirts. So we definitely know that there were at least 11 plus 8, 19 people uh, who went for the trip. But, you now the question doesn't say anything about, you know, other people who might be uh, wearing, uh, let us say, yellow or green or other uh, shirts, right? So, you know, the 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 question uh, doesn't list uh, exhaustively, right? Uh, all the people who went for the trip, and therefore we really don't know uh, whether uh, we have uh, more than nineteen or not. So we cannot really answer it except saying that okay, there were at least. 19. Now let us uh, look at a slightly more different question. So we have a few classmates who went for a mountain climbing, right? Another trip. Six of them had shoes, right? So they were wearing shoes, and uh, seven of them had walking sticks with them, while three were barefoot, right? Now, how many went for the trip? So here there are two two problems, right? Uh, we don't know whether the question is uh, exhaustive, whether it covers all the people. But even if, let us say that, like you know, suppose we are given that the remaining three people were barefoot, we still don't know. Uh, maybe uh, the seven of them. Who were having walking stick 
were uh, uh, precisely those having shoes and uh, uh, who were barefoot or maybe some of them had uh, something else like you know boots or something right so this question uh, does not say whether there could be intersections between these people or like whether there is some other uh, thing they were separate uh, at least seven people right so these questions we don't know so therefore we cannot really answer anything about this so these three uh, tells us something right in the first uh, question we were able to answer precisely because we knew that both the sets were disjoint and they were exhausting right so <clears throat> if uh, we are given that if a and b are uh, disjoint sets and then uh, uh, you know their union we can say has cardinality equal to the sum of the cardinalities of each of them right so this is called the addition principle so if we want to use addition to count things then we can uh, use this principle but we require that they to be uh, disjoint right so if a and b are disjoint then we can uh, find the cardinality of a union b is equal to cardinality of a plus cardinality of b on the other hand uh, uh, on the other hand uh, if you have more we can still uh, you know um, we we can still use this but we we need uh, you know the pairwise disjoint uh, condition to be able to use this so so suppose we have a1 to ak are uh, pairwise disjoint sets then the then the union uh, has cardinality equal to the sum of the cardinalities of the individual uh, uh, sets but it is important to note that we were clearly saying that a1 to ak are pairwise disjoint right it is not sufficient to say that let's say that there are uh, a1 a2 and a3 and uh, a1 intersection a2 intersection a3 is empty right so a1 uh, intersection a2 intersection empty says that a1 a2 a3 are all together disjoint right they don't have a common element but it does not say that a1 intersection a2 is this you know like uh, is empty and a1 intersection a3 is empty and a2 intersection a3 is empty so this is uh, required to be able to use the addition principle so <clears throat> we have a pairwise disjoint sets then we can also count so this is the generalization of the addition principle okay now mm. so here is a subtraction principle okay so what is the subtraction principle it says that if a is a finite set and uh, b is subset of a then cardinality of a minus b is equal to cardinality of a minus cardinality of b so earlier we were looking at when we can add now we are asking when we can subtract okay so we are saying that if uh, b is subset of a then we can find the cardinality of a minus b by looking at a minus b cardinality of a minus cardinality of b but b is subset of a is very important if b is not subset of a this uh, you know uh, principle cannot be directly applied so here is an example let us say count the number of positive integers with at most four digits that have at least two different digits so we want to count the number of positive integers with at most four digits uh, that have at least two different digits now one can directly count this Okay. I, I I recommend that you you know you spend some time finding out how to uh, directly count this right rather than uh, using the subtraction principle and then see why it is going to be better to use subtraction principle here. Okay. So how do we use the subtraction principle? So what are we given? We are given uh, that uh, you know we have uh, uh, the set of positive integers with at most four digits that is what we are looking at right with some extra properties so we can consider your big set as the set of all positive integers with at most four digits how many are there well we know that the smallest number with five digits is uh, 10000 so therefore up to 9999 right 9999 
uh, we have uh, uh, integers and they have uh, uh, they have uh, cardinality exactly uh, i think I, I made the wrong tool so like one two etc let's say nine 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 right and this set has cardinality is equal to nine 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 right so we have uh, uh, this many elements in our big set now we want to be able to find another set b with the property that if you subtract uh, cardinality of b we get what we want right we want to find out the sets uh, i know we want to find out the number of elements that have at least uh, two different digits now so the natural uh, set that we can look at is all those integers with at most uh, four digits but having only one uh, you know there is no there is no two distinct digits right there is so exactly the same digit is repeated for all these numbers now this is very easy to count right so what is b consisting of it has all the uh, numbers 1 to 9 right 1 to etc 9 then it has uh, 1 1 2 2 3 3 etc right again uh, there are 9 of them 99 then you can have 1 1 1 2 2 2 etc up to 999 Similarly, 1111, etc., 9999, right? These are precisely those with you no know, 111222, etc., right? Not, uh, you know, all the numbers in between, right? So here we have exactly uh, 9, here exactly 9, here exactly 9, and here also exactly 9. So this says that we have exactly uh, 36 elements in B. Right, so 36 numbers has this property that it has it uses only one digit, right? I mean, repeatedly, but only one uh, uh, distinct digit is appearing, I mean, a unique digit is appearing. So, therefore, we can find out the cardinality of a minus b, uh, which says, right, so a minus b is the set of numbers with the property that we were looking at, right, less than. Uh, 9999 uh, less than 10,000 and uh, having at least two different digits. So, what is this? This is 9999 minus 36, right? Uh, again, wrong tool, sorry. 9999 minus 36. And what is this number? Whatever it is, 63, right? 9963. Fine. Okay. So we use subtraction principle to count this. But again, uh, you can verify that if you can count without using subtraction principle directly. And maybe you can see that like this is much more uh, efficient way to uh, do the counting. OK. So now, as I told you, uh, we want uh, the condition that B is subset of A to be able to use the subtraction principle so i want you to come up with uh, some examples that illustrate that b subset a is necessary right otherwise the counting will go wrong so come up with some examples with this very easy to come up with but still think about it come up with a couple of different examples okay so this is the homework now let us look at another uh, problem so we, we already studied two different principles, right? Addition principle and subtraction principle. Now let us look at another problem. So count the number of binary strings of uh, length k. So binary strings are the strings that we create uh, with uh, just zeros and ones, right? So example is like 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, right? Or uh, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, right? So all these are binary strings. Now we want to uh, look at strings of length exactly k. How many are there? Now how do you how do you count something like this, right? So you can try to find out like for 
like one for example two right so for one if the length is exactly one we have either zero or one right there are two uh, possibilities and that is it if you are looking at the length two then you have zero 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 one one zero and one one right there are four of them right? now once you do this we can try to you know like come up with a uh, you know uh, an idea and then try to use some method like induction or something to prove this that is one possibility uh, now let us look at uh, another way to look at this so what we know is that we are going to look at uh, strings of length exactly k right so we have a, uh, we have a string of length k means that there are k positions right position 1 position 2 position 3 etc position k so we have strings uh, with uh, uh, k positions now if you look at any position the what are the possible letters of uh, that can appear here either 0 or 1 right so at each position we have only the possibility to write either 0 or 1 right 0 or 1 right 0 or 1 0 or 1 right so every position has exactly these two possibilities now i can put 0 or 1 at the first place and without worrying about what happened in there, I can put 0 or 1 at the second place, one of them, right? Exactly one of them I can put at each of the k different places. So this says that I have exactly two choices, right? Two possibilities for the first position, 0 or 1. Exactly two possibilities for the second position. And the first position, whichever I choose, I can still choose the second position without worrying about what happened there. So they are basically independent. So I can decide this uh, independently, right? Like what to write here. So therefore, what we know is that if I have two choices here and two choices there, then I have two into two, four possible choices for the strings of length two, right? So I can basically multiply the choices available at the position one, position two, etc., position k, and multiply them together to get the number of strings. So the number of strings of length k is going to be 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 etc up to k times. So that is 2 raised to k. So we, we immediately get that the number of binary strings of length k is equal to 2 raised to k. So Now let us look at uh, another question. We want to find the number of four digit numbers starting and ending with an even digit. Okay. So how will you how will you calculate this? Again, I want you to pause the video and think about it for a few minutes if you want. Right. Maybe you can get it immediately, but think about it and then find your own answer. And then uh, if no, then then you proceed right so how do we do this so we have four digit numbers and then it can start and end with even digit so this puts some restrictions on what are the possible numbers that you can use right for example if you are uh, looking at the first position right the first position can you use uh, let us say right let us say that you are using uh, the four uh, positions are here right now in the first position can you uh, use uh, like you can you are only allowed to use even digits so therefore what are the even digits like 0 2 4 6 and 8 right but 0 cannot be used in the first digit because we are talking about numbers it's not string right so therefore uh, we are not allowed to use 0 so we can use 2 okay, 2 comma 4 comma 6 comma 8 right any of these numbers we can use here now it should start and end with even digits but that doesn't say that the middle digits can be anything right so middle digits can be any of the possible numbers 0 to 9 right so therefore uh, there are 10 possible choices here right similarly third digit can also be any of the 10 possible digits 
what about the last digit it must be an even digit so what are the possibilities 2 4 6 8 but here we also can have 0 so there are 5 choices here 4 choices here but now these can be independent right no matter what i choose at the first place i can choose uh, any of the 10 digits in the second place so i have four choices here and independently i have 10 choices here so 4 into 10 similarly another independent 10 choices here i have another into 10 and into 5 so therefore i have total number of choices is 4 into 10 into 10 into 5 which is equal to 2000 right so we have exactly 2000 numbers with this property Now, this tells us uh, a general principle which we call the product rule or fundamental counting principle. So, what does uh, this exactly state? So, we can state the fundamental counting principle as follows. So, consider a finite sequence of decisions. Okay. So, each so sequence means that you know in the first uh, time you make a decision then there is another place where you can make another decision like this way so consider a finite sequence of decisions and suppose that the number of choices for each separate decision is independent of the previously made decisions okay so the decisions are made in some sequence and i make the first decision then second decision and when I take the third decision, I want to make sure that all the previous decisions does not affect the choices here. Right? So the choices are independent of the previous decisions. Then the total number of ways to choose the sequence of decisions is the product of the number of choices at each stage. So we have a finite sequence of decisions and the choices the number of choices for each uh, separate decision is independent of the previously made decisions then the total number of ways to choose the sequence of all the decisions right is the product of the number of choices at each stage so this is the product rule now we already saw two applications of product rule but let us look at a few more because they're very very important rule and uh, we will need uh, lots of applications of this in in the following uh, days so here is another example right find the number of positive integer factors of 1500 okay so how can you use product rule to find out the number of factors of a number given like 1500 here so again try to work it out yourself stop the video watch and then get back so how are you going to do this now <clears throat> what we know about 1500 1500 i can write it as 3 into right 5 raised to so how many so i i basically i look at the prime factor right so I know that uh, there is uh, 5 uh, appearing 3 times, right? 5 raised to 3. And then uh, how many uh, times 2 is appearing? 2 raised to, let us say, uh, 4 times, right? Is it correct? 3 into 5, 15. Then I have 25 into 4 which is 100 then another uh, no 2 raised to 2 uh, okay so 2 raised to how many are there not 4 right where is the eraser right how many are there 2 raised to 2 right so 25 into 4 uh, which is 100 and then 3 into 550 right so 3 into 5 raised to 3 into 2 raised to 2. Right? So, this is the prime factorization of 1500. Now, how can you use the prime factorization now to find the 
number of positive integer factors. So if you look at any factor, we know that the factor is basically a, a product of the possible uh, subset of the prime factors, right? So therefore, we can just look at how many such uh, possibilities are there, right? So since uh, 3 is appearing only once, my choice is to have either, uh, you know, 3 to appear in the factor or not, right? So the power of 3 in the factor can be 0 or 1, right? So I can have 3 raised to 0 or 3 raised to 1, right, as the possible factors. Similarly, I had I can have 5 raised to 0, 5 raised to 1, 5 raised to 2, and 5 raised to 3, right? There are four possible choices for 5, right? And then I have three possible choices for 2, right? 0, 1, or 2. So therefore, uh, what can I say? I can say that like if this number is given, then I can find out there is a 2 into 4 into 3. Right, which is 24 possible factors. So these are the number of possible integer, uh, positive integer factors of 1500. So here again we use the product rule, right? Because the choices were independent, right? The three, you know, to I'm um, choosing three to be a one of the factors or not, is rough, uh, you know, independent of my second choice, right? How many fives I am going to take, or how many I am going to take. So therefore I can use this. So I get uh, uh, <coughs> the answer 24. 